North Korea, an interesting country on its own to say the least. In terms of North Korea in the footballing world, you might have heard of North Korea's debut at the World Cup in 1966 where they managed to beat Italy, but other than that, do you really know any North Korean players at all? Well, there was once a big talent. He had a bunch of quality and potential on him. His name was Han Kwang Song, also known in the FIFA career mode scene as he had a massive 87 potential in FIFA 18 and FIFA 19. He had a bright future ahead of him, but political issues has left him almost hopeless in having any sorts of a great future career. North Korea is nowadays known for many things, mostly for stuff that happens within the country and the many questions that get raised with the country as not many images or video footage get leaked for the rest of the world to see. North Koreans are actually allowed to travel abroad, but only with the necessary permission. Most North Koreans that travel do it for business. A lot of North Korean students dream of studying overseas, but only the most privileged are chosen. North Korea do send a lot of athletes abroad for international competition though, and they even sent 22 athletes and 400 fans to the Winter Games in South Korea in 2018. But, as you might have noticed, it's quite difficult for regular South Koreans to get out of the country. If you compare that to the football side of things, it's not that big of a shock that you don't see many North Korean professional footballers. I mean, can you name one footballer from North Korea? Exactly. However, a couple of years ago, there was one. One really talented striker from North Korea. It was the first to see such a high profile talent from the country. His name was Han Kwang Song. Han was born on the 11th of September 1998 in Pyongyang in North Korea. He is one of the few emigrants permitted to live outside the country. But how did he manage this? Why him? To get the answer to that, you have to go back to 2012. The North Korean Football Federation were looking for a suitable academy in Europe, where the country's biggest talents could develop, improve and learn from their European counterparts. Han's generation was the first to have this unique opportunity. The North Korean Federation made a deal with an academy in Spain, called CE Techno Football. You probably haven't heard of them before, but an interesting fact to know is that Conrad de la Fuente, who used to play in Barcelona's youth academy and currently plays at Olympique Marseille in France, also played there. Han moved from Chopyong SC in North Korea, where he was playing in the youth academy, to CE Techno Football in Spain. The North Korean players only stayed there for one year, and the North Korean Federation went to Cagliari in Italy after that year, as Mauro Costoraya, who I will explain more of in a bit, said in an interview to website First Time Finish. North Korea and Italy's relationship in football goes all the way back to 1966. At the World Cup, which was hosted by England, both North Korea and Italy faced each other in a group stage. It was a first for North Korea to qualify for a World Cup. But that didn't stop them from coming out as the surprise winners in this match against Italy, with a 1-0 victory. The result certainly left a positive mark on both nations and they so have had a good relationship since. In more recent decades, Antonio Razzi, an Italian politician, developed a good bond with the North Korean government and even visited the country multiple times. He also met Pak Do Ik, who was the country's World Cup hero in 1966 by scoring the only goal in a match against Italy. North Korea even managed to get to the quarterfinals of the tournament as well. Mauro Costareia is an academy coach of Serie B side Perugia and was part of an Italian delegation that went to North Korea to scout the best talents there. He follows. The North Korean Federation were looking for a European academy to develop the players. We offered them what they were looking for with education visas and opportunity to be scouted. The Italian delegation went to North Korea in 2014, Kostoreya remembers, and we had the intention to find the best talent. You could doubt the level of quality of the players in such an isolated country like North Korea, but the delegation were impressed. Technically, the North Korean players were perfect. We did not have much to teach the players in that regard, but tactically we thought them a lot. The delegation brought back an entire team in the end, with Han Kwang Song among them. Due to the players' previous experience in traveling and living abroad, as they did in the Techno Football Academy in Spain, it helped them settle in quite early. The North Korean team played matches all over Europe, against Red Bull Salzburg and Genoa for example. The North Korean players were 16 and 17 years old, but did manage to draw 1-0 against a Serie C team, Makara Terzi. They were fighting for promotion in the league, but didn't manage to win. Makaratese's goal even came from a penalty. Besides this match, they drew with Inter Milan's Primavera side, which is basically their under-23 team. This Primavera side were undoubtedly one of the best in the country at this moment in time. But even in a team that was generally filled with talent in every position, Han stood out. Costa Reyes took Han under his wing and saw a lot of potential in the forward. 
he was very fast, one of the fastest players of his generation, but at the same time he was a technical striker. The only thing he lacked was his finishing, because over in North Korea the concentration was on the technical aspects like keeping possession and playing as a team. Hans' professionalism outside of the pitch was exactly what Kostraja was looking for. He was always the first to arrive and the last to leave. He always put in the maximum effort, it did not matter if they were playing a friendly match or if it was a Monday or a Tuesday. He was an ordinary young man, he liked to hang out with his friends and to go shopping. But he never drank alcohol or went to party in clubs. He understood the type of lifestyle he needed to practice to become a professional. Even when he went to Cagliari and everyone was talking about him and he got a bit famous, he still remained humble. Every time we went to the cinema and people spotted him, he was always available to take pictures. He always remembered where he came from. He was from a normal family of workers. Everything he did and is doing now is for them. His dream is to be remembered in North Korea and Europe. In the summer of 2015, Han signed for Cagliari's youth team where he eventually got to the first team of Cagliari in 2017. Han became the first North Korean to play in the Serie A as he debuted in a 3-1 away win over Palermo, appearing as a substitute for Marco Sao in the 86th minute. He scored his first goal for the club in a 3-2 defeat to Torino in the following week, becoming the first North Korean to score a goal in the Serie A. Four days later, on the 13th of April, Han signed a contract extension to continue playing for Cagliari until 2022. Han ended up playing a total of five league games that season, scoring once. In the following summer, Han made a loan move to Serie B team Perugia. He debuted for the club in a cup match against Benevento, which they won 4-0. Just weeks later, Hans scored a hat-trick on a Serie B debut for Perugia in a 5-1 away win over Virtus Antella. In total, Hans scored 7 league goals for Perugia in 17 games during the 2017-18 season before returning to Cagliari in February of 2018. This loan move was only for half a season. His first game as a starter for Cagliari came on the 27th of February, in a 5-0 defeat to Napoli. For the remainder of the season, Han played seven league games for Cagliari in the 2017-18 season. But another six months later, Han joined Perugia again, as the North Korean made a second loan move to I Grifoni. He ended the 2018-19 season with four goals and 20 league games for the club. With the then 20-year-old North Korean still being seen as a big talent in Italy, he made another move in the following summer of 2019. On deadline day, Han joined Juventus on a two-year loan from Cagliari with an obligation to buy him at the end of the two years. Han joined Juventus' youth team at first. He scored just once and gave two assists in 17 matches. A few months later, in January 2020, Juventus permanently signed Han from Cagliari for 3.5 million euros. An exciting deal you might say, as Juventus signed Han after just a few months instead of the full two years. Well, that was quickly undone, as Han surprisingly joined Cateri side Aldo Hill six days later for 7 million euros. Han didn't even make his debut for Juventus' first team. And it wasn't because he wasn't good enough, as Mauricio Sarri, Juventus manager at the time, actually really liked Han. He always trained with the first team and even got called up to the Serie A squad against Lecce. But then there was the turning point. Something you might have seen coming from the beginning, as there were political problems involved. Of course, football and politics shouldn't be in the same sentence. And I'm not going to lie, I don't even want to talk about politics. But, let's be honest, you can't divide the two anymore, especially not with this example. Sadly, political problems were a recurrent theme in Han's career. See, the United Nations placed heavy sanctions on the North Korean regime right from the start of Han's journey in Italy. These sanctions are intended to suppress North Korea's current nuclear project. This project has had an impact on many North Korean citizens living abroad. It is estimated that North Korea takes about 80% of the wages of North Koreans living abroad. Yes. 80%. These North Korean people living abroad have no choice. Martin Williams, a North Korean expert, further explains, With Han, it could be similar. If the state demands the money, he really has no choice. If the United Nations estimates of this 80% are correct, then Han's wages paid by a club like Juventus could indirectly help fund the North Korean nuclear program, which is where most of the 80% would be going to. This is why the United Nations have urged its nations to deport all their North Korean immigrants. This makes Han's current contract hugely problematic and something that could not be overlooked by the UN. And violating UN laws could impose major financial consequences and sanctions on Han's potential future clubs. 
the United Nations immediately got in between when Juventus permanently signed Hahn. They threatened with sanctions as well. And so, six days later, Juventus were forced into selling their new North Korean player to Qatari's club Aldo Hill. Hahn signed a five-year contract earning roughly 4.9 million dollars or 4.5 million euros. Fortunately for him, Hahn did well at Aldo Hill. He made four goal contributions with three goals and one assist and seven starts for the club and even helped him lift the Qatar Super League. But unfortunately, Hahn's career hit another dead end. And once again there were political issues. With his recent transfer to Qatar, it was found that UN sanctions were violated. The result, Hahn wasn't able to play any more games for the club. His contract was terminated in July 2021, one and a half year later after he joined Aldo Hill. A year before, Hahn insisted in official documents that he would not send any of his earnings back to the North Korean regime. Sadly, there is no real proof that can confirm this. And that is basically where the footballing journey for Hahn has stopped for now. He's currently still without a club since his contract termination in 2021, and it is very unlikely that the now 23-year-old striker will ever get another club again, as the UN laws haven't changed and the 80% of the salary of a North Korean living abroad still goes to North Korea. Unless one of these two change, it is possibly the end of the road for Han Kwang Thong. And leaving out political issues, it's a very sad ending to possibly North Korea's biggest talent in their history, who was even linked with some of Europe's biggest clubs before. The main club who was interested was Liverpool, with scout Barry Hunter even trying to get Han to sign for the club, promising Han would be able to meet Steven Gerrard. To everyone's surprise, Han had no idea who Gerrard was. They could all see the funny side of it and Han apologized to not knowing who Gerrard is. As Mauro Costareia says, everyone was laughing and Han was saying sorry, sorry. But that is what Han is like, he only thinks about playing football. And that's the end of Han's story, a promising player who clearly had a lot of quality to even impress Liverpool. Political issues have sadly stopped him from being able to play football outside of North Korea. The future for him is still a mystery and it would be a real shame to see his enormous potential go to waste. And that is the story of Han Kwang Song. What was once a huge talent has been held back by external factors, and it's not looking like that will change soon. Thank you for listening to this story. If you thought it was interesting and don't want to miss any other football stories, be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss another video, and I will see you next time.